Oh. Listen, if Iceland is on your bucket list, you have to find a way to check it off. It is fantastic. You've heard about the beautiful ice caves, the crystal clean water. Oh. Well, I mean, I have to check it off my bucket list too. Um, we're in Massachusetts now. I've never been to Iceland. So, you know, it occurs to me that many people don't give much thought to the water that they drink. Maybe turn on a tap, maybe use one of those filter pitchers that we can get, perhaps an under sink water filter kind of thing, bottled water. What is more important to our immediate health than water? air, we could last a few minutes without that before we're gone. Maybe a few days at most without water though. It's critical to our cellular health, our ability to detoxify, uh, bathing cells and communication and so forth. So I thought today maybe we could take a look at the importance of good clean water to good clean health. Oh, and by the way, this is as close as we're getting to actual Iceland today, but it is delicious. Wow, great to be inside in the heat. This is no joke. In order for you to understand the importance of water in human physiology, we're gonna to have to get a few things straight. This is the periodic table of the- Hold your horses, slow down. We're not going back to Chem 101 here. All we really need to know about water is that it's super important in human health. How do I know? Because the king of medical physiology textbooks, Dr. Arthur Guyton, says so. Guyton's textbook of medical physiology, I've used it for 40 years in school and beyond. Page 391, the total amount of water in a man of average weight is 40 liters, or 57% of his total body weight. Wow. There are dozens of sources that will reveal the multitude of body processes that are super dependent on adequate water supply. You probably saw 10 videos before you clicked on mine. There's no hard and fast research that I can find demonstrating that the mythical eight glasses of water per day is the, uh, the magic number, or that we need to drink one half our body weight in ounces per day, or the you're already dehydrated by the time you're thirsty. Can you imagine Mother Nature making that kind of mistake on the most important thing in our day? Doesn't happen. If you're thirsty, drink water. I did see a study in the Journal of Epidemiology 2012 that demonstrated that five glasses of pure water per day did dramatically decrease the risk of death from cardiovascular disease versus two cups per day. And I do think that five cups a day of good clean water is a rational number to shoot for. That's about 40 ounces a day. But does it matter what kind of water you're drinking? It must, right? I mean, you've got reverse osmosis filtration. You have bottled water of all kinds, mineral water. You can buy expensive machine that alkalinizes your water. How do you know what's right? You know, you could go purring into your local car club meeting in your brand new Corvette ZR1 fueled up with 93 octane, or maybe you just try to sneak in the back of that lot because you fueled up with 87 octane and that motor's pinging and knocking a little bit, right? Well, that's the same thing here. What do you want to choose to fuel this high performance engine with? Crummy swamp water? or something that's gonna fuel those cells with high efficiency? Well, let's see if we can figure it out. First of all, municipal water is probably plenty safe to drink and keep you alive and kicking. And I say probably because that's not true in 100% of the cases. Witness the horror story that was Flint, Michigan a few years back. And there are thousands of cases of everything ranging from sloppiness to incompetence to outright fraud in testing and reporting procedures in local and national treatment plants. So this is actually a very big issue. So in that case, and given that most of us aren't PhD chemists, maybe we can think of a couple simple ways we can start testing our own drinking water. Okay, a couple of properties of water that you can easily measure at home. One, pH. Everyone's heard of that, right? You know what, first of all, let's come clean here. Quick interlude. Okay, if my skin tone looks a little different than last scene, it's because Kay and I had to take a little break and get to Florida here. I had a chiropractic seminar, we have some R&R, &R, but we're back and let's finish this video up.
Yeah, that was a fun break and nice to be back though. You pool owners and spa owners understand pH very well. You manipulate it every day to uh, control things like microbial growth, yeast, and so forth, don't you? So we understand that pH is a measure of relative acidity versus alkalinity or what we know of as acid and base. It's measured on a continuum from 0 to 14 with 7 being neutral, neither acid nor base. As for humans, it seems that the most physiologically healthy drinking water is about neutral to slightly alkaline, sort of mirroring that of blood. You know, the body keeps the pH of blood in an incredibly narrow range of pH. It's almost exactly all the time maintained at 7.4, slightly basic. Reverse osmosis filtration is a method which uses high pressure to force water through specialized membranes that filter out virtually all foreign contaminants. The result, essentially super pure water, 7 pH perfectly neutral. Sounds great, right? Well, yeah, it's super pure, few contaminants, but what about that neutral pH it just created? Well, guess what? Pure water is very hungry. In fact, that neutral 7 pH very quickly turns acidic. Why? The water actually grabs CO2 from the air while it's sitting on your counter, forming a mild acid called carbonic acid the pH can readily run from that neutral 7 to 5 or 5.5, actually acidic. But look, not to worry, carbonic acid is perfectly safe to drink in the minimal amounts formed by this process. But I share that just by way of example, pH alone is not a good measure of the healthfulness of water. Water in nature is never pure, by the way, it's almost never 7 pH. It's always got some dissolved stuff in there, mostly mineral salts, calcium, magnesium, and so forth, as it percolates through the soil and through the rock and, and moves down streams. And depending on the various minerals that are dissolved in the water, the pH can be uh, slightly higher or lower than 7. Hey, welcome to my lab. You know, you can search YouTube for dozens of videos on pH of virtually every water you can think of, so we're not going there. Let me just give you a little quick pH example here. I have a really high quality naturally mineralized water here from Tuscany called Aquapana and it has a natural pH of 8. So let's look at a typical night out at a fancy restaurant. So. Ma'am, I believe you had the straight up Aquapana. I know you love that 8 pH and there it is. It's a beautiful deep blue as advertised. sir. I believe you were the added minerals. Uh, let's put that in there for you. That should be super healthy for you, sir. We know you're into the health stuff. Oh my gosh, it's very acidic. But we know that that is very healthy with the added minerals. And I think the young lady was for the added 409 formula. We clean the kitchen with that and it's wonderful in the drink. So let's give that a shot. We know the color and the pH is an indicator of the healthfulness and there you go ma'am that is the bluest of the blue that looks about a 9 or a 10 pH and one other common test for you TDS or total dissolved solids measured with a device like this it's a bit misleading and misunderstood and not necessarily of great value either in determining healthfulness or quality of your drinking water. One popular filter maker you've probably heard of supplies a TDS meter in its uh, filter packaging and implies that achieving a zero TDS with your drinking water equates to healthy water. In and of itself, this is just not true. TDS is simply a measure of conductivity of a sample. Minerals like calcium, magnesium, potassium, sodium in nature carry a charge and when these are present in water that water is able to conduct an electrical current. So a TDS meter really just estimates the amount of charged minerals or metals in a uh, water sample based on the strength of the electrical current that water can carry. What a TDS meter does not measure 
gasoline, motor oil, pharmaceutical residues in your drinking water, pesticides, things like that. Furthermore, a TDS meter is not able to differentiate between the various minerals and other substances carrying charges in the water. For instance, lead, uh, dangerous in extremely small amounts, can go undetected in your drinking water by a TDS meter. Let's finish our demo section with a zero water filter test. Yep, right on the money. Beautiful, zero, zero, zero. Let's drop a little sea salt in that solution and see what happens. Okay, we have a 134 parts per million. No longer meeting the zero standard, however, a very healthy cocktail. Lastly, let's try the ever healthful nail polish remover. That's always a good addition to the drink. Looks like zero, zero, zero to me. So you know, it seems through all my research, I've come down to one basic thought. Specific pH doesn't seem to matter. TDS doesn't seem to really matter. You know what matters? I want to keep poisons out of my drinking water. Heavy metals, toxic pesticides, pharmaceuticals, etc. Fun fact, federal drinking water standards have not been updated for 20 years. You're looking here at a summary of 10 poisons in my city's drinking water which exceeded healthful levels but are not required to be reported. Many are known carcinogens. Enter your zip code at the site I'll link in the description and see how your water stacks up. So you know what all this is adding up to? A Dr. J health hack project. Yep, whole house filter. We'll go four stages on this. Spin down filter stage one. First line of defense, we'll grab stuff like dirt, rust, and sand. Number two, sediment filter. Hits the suspended solids that sneak through stage one. Next, carbon block filter. We're getting serious about it now. Volatile organic compounds, chlorine, pesticides, herbicides, industrial chemicals. Over a hundred different pathogens are grabbed by this stuff. And finally, iron, manganese, and lead. Now we're talking safe, drinkable tap water. Babe, what are you doing? I'm thirsty. Have you paid any attention to my video so far? Not really. Could you please dump it? I'll make it much better for you. Okay. Thank you. Gotta check for leaks. Wish me luck. Okay, give it a try now. Ah, uh, it's fantastic. 